So welcome to the video. Now, if you're a watcher of the channel and you know anything of London, you'll know exactly what that is standing behind me. But we're going to go even older than that. So this was built way back in the Norman times. But what we're going to look at today is something even older, even though you can hear more modern stuff and the sirens in the background. So welcome to London Visited and welcome to our walk of the Roman Wall. Yes, we're going back to AD 55 when the Romans got to London called it Londinium and built a wall around the city of London, or Londinium as it was known then. So we're going to do the city walk with all of the plaques which go all of the way from here. And before the Tower of London was built, the Roman wall went right through the middle of where the Tower of London is now. So you've seen the first post, here it comes. And now we're going to carry on our walk and we'll show you the way to go. Hope you enjoy it. Now, interestingly, We've got the Tower of London here, and when you come off the tube, you'll see this. And a lot of people actually think this is Roman related, which it isn't. They actually think this has come from the late 13th century um, and was to do with major modifications for the Tower of London. And this was actually part of the city wall, but it was a medieval gate and the constraints of the subway gave an opportunity to actually excavate and conserve the remains. There we go. Excellent. OK, so we're going to go under the subway to keep our walk. But the good news is we come across a major pub. Now, it's really funny because when you come down here, everyone thinks, oh, you're going to the Tower of London. Actually, we're not. This is just where we start our walk. And we're going to go up these steps here to our next plaque, which I can see at the top. There we go. And here we have a big chunk of the Roman wall. And also, you can tell it's Roman. Can you see those stripes in the middle, the sort of terracotta in the middle? Now, that almost signifies that it's a Roman wall, an original part of it. So the Romans first built the wall around London at about AD 200, and it remained a walled city for about 1,500 years, which is quite incredible. Now, the wall defined Londinium's boundaries and marked its status as the most important city in Roman Britain. And this barrier was about three kilometres long and it stood over six metres tall. Because what's quite interesting, and we're going to show you other bits of Roman London left behind, is that Roman London was a lot further down than it is today. It's actually been built up above it. It's about two storeys higher now than it was then. And uh, small square towers were regularly placed along the wall circuit across the wall um, and platforms were later added for catapults. So it was abandoned. London, Londinium was abandoned at around 450 AD and the walls were gradually decayed. So the city was then reoccupied by King Alfred in AD 886 and the wall was repaired, heightened and redesigned throughout the medieval period. And the remains were remains of a medieval fortified gate in around 1300 which we've just seen and then what we've got over here to our left and i'm going to show you the statue in a second is a copy of a roman statue believed to be emperor Tyjan between 98 and 117 who predated the wall there you go so that's from the 18th century that statue But then we have the second plaque. And these are all scooted around. So the idea is we're going to find these. There we go. 21 panels in all. And my understanding is some of these are missing. So uh, we'll have to have a look and see which ones we can find and which ones we can't. But the good news is we're going to find as much of the wall as possible. So this part of the city wall, there you go. Height of 10.6 metres. And the Roman work survives to the level of the century walk, which is 4.4 metres high with the medieval stonework. So that's number two. And also, if you're thinking of doing it, look, you see, there you go. It gives you an idea of where the previous plaque was and where the nearest next plaque is. So we're doing it in a uh, numbered order. So we've done number one, which is the one we showed you previously. And now we're going to show you number two. And there you go. You can even see where the original London wall was against the roads today and that's what we're going to walk today all right let's go to the next one to number three so we'll continue up the stairs right by tower 
Hill Station. Then we go up the ramp, past the ice cream van. And what I love about this is, yeah, I think that's old. It's like, wow, this is even older. Now, also, the great thing is when you come up here, you don't necessarily need a guide, but you have got lots of plaques that are around showing you where the walled city was. Okay, let's continue down here. As you can see, it's a windy, sort of threatening to rain day in London. And this would be a lovely summer walk to do. But this has been one of these walks I've been meaning to do for such a long time. So, let's just give you an idea. So as we're walking down here, you can see the buildings. If you look down, you can see the remains of the Roman wall right down there. on the foundations of the buildings that's here. So actually, London has been built on the Roman wall. But then, you get to this bit, which is all exposed. So we're gonna go around there and have a look around there. I've got a funny feeling it's gonna be a lot like this, but you're gonna have to sort of sneak through hotels, etc., to get to the bits of the London wall. But what you've got here, is you've got a big chunk of the London War. And as you can see, they brought people in here. Then, so that's the bit that we saw from the other side. But then, you've got the plaque here. So, so apparently the, the wall, if you can read that, was nine feet thick at the base, which is quite incredible. So you've also got the windows that were built in, this is up there, but made very small, purely for defensive reasons. So to give you, give you a view out, but actually give it defensive. And then you've got various other holes that are up there to support the structure. So it's brilliant, yeah. Over here by the Tower of London, you've got the aged Tower of London that everyone comes to, but right by the side of it, you've got two massive chunks of the London Wall. And there are other chunks as well that we are going to go and see. So I will be bringing those to you in this video as well. There you go. And let's go around the back. Here we go, around the back even clearer vision but you can see the wall but then if you look down you can see where the wall is down there as well there you go and you've got those terracotta stripes again giving that foundation to the wall but then also around here there we go you've got number three so that was the bronze one around there but this is much easier to read and it had a double staircase which led to the medieval century wall on either side the loopholes could be used by the archers there you go and there's no surviving means of access to the loopholes we'll probably reach by a timber platform keyed into the socket holes which are visible we saw those with the sort of grating over the top of them and there's uh, no parallel for this arrangement elsewhere on the wall indicating special care was taken with defenses close to the tower there you go and giving it out of face gives a good impression of the original strength of london's defenses and i love that there you go just gives you a view for the building of the wall, some of the tools that we used. There we go. And then, <laughs> plaque three, round to plaque four. So of course, London is well and truly built up. We are now around just underneath Finchurch Street Railway Station. So uh, if you come down here and you hear loud noises, trains going over, that'll be why Finchurch Street. But the good news is, because the wall's heading off in that direction, that's the general direction we're going. So we'll carry on through under here. It'll be interesting to see how long the whole walk takes. So this is called cross wall. And that'd be called cross wall because yes, the wall would have gone through here. 
Now, as you go around this area here, the bit of the London Wall that we're looking for is actually in the basement of these modern built offices. So what you need to do is to walk down, have a look over the edge, just as I'm doing here, and you can see it in their basement. So yes, these offices have had to build themselves around the remains of the London Wall, because of course you're preserving history, and of course, well, you've got protection there. And yes, I was stopped by security, who I told, well, it's our London Wall, so I'm filming it especially for you. So we've come through from that way. We've seen a bit of the wall, which is in the basement of Bank of America on Bank of America House. And then outside Emperor House, we have plaque number four. Oh, hello. Look at me, right. So this is interesting. So here, Emperor House and the city wall So excavations 79 to 1980 revealed a 32 foot, 10 meter length of the Roman wall. The red sandstone plinth at the base marks the position of the Roman ground level. And outside there is a ragstone bonding, of course, with red tiles. The wall was a V-shaped defensive ditch and the earth was used supporting back in the inner wall. Now, interestingly enough, ah, oh, it's in there. You can see it which is amazing. So I'm going to point that in just one second. And the base of the Roman towers can be seen. And the towers were built from ragstone, crushed chalk and tombstones removed from nearby cemeteries. And the builders you know, stepped the foundations into the early ditch to prevent subsidence. Many of the towers were reused in medieval defences, but this one had been demolished by the 13th century. So this is what the tower would have originally looked like. There we go. There and would have had those catapults. But here, inside, you've got... So not only have we got the wall in here, which of course everything is built right, I was saying earlier how deep the foundations of the original wall were and how much higher London is now than it was during the Roman times. But you've also got a complete collection down there of different Roman pottery, glass, pipes, you name it, you've got it. And also, for those that are regular watchers on the channel, thank you. But not only that, remember these from last year? Oh yeah. I can't remember where he was positioned, but I do remember seeing him because I got them all. And this is the, going to be the wonderful thing, is discovering bits of the wall, which I think is fantastic that they've built the modern buildings around. So the wall survives, and we've uh, got bits of wall here, there and everywhere. So let's see what other bits we've got surviving as well. Right, we're moving on now. That was panel four, and off to panel number five. Ah, and I think if I remember rightly, this is Aldgate, which, as the name suggests, was a gate into the city of London. So we've got Aldgate, uh, we've got Bishop's Gate, we've got loads of them all coming up. And they were the defensive gates that let you through the tower or through the wall into the city of London. So let's go over here and find that one. So we're at number five, which is, as I said, Aldgate which of course is in the city of London. And let's just give you a quick view on that. So when the Roman wall was built, a stone gate, perhaps already spanning the Roman road, linking London with Colchester at the time, the gate had twin entrances flanked by guard towers. Outside the gate, a large cemetery developed to the south of the road. Later in the fourth century, the gate may have been rebuilt to provide a platform for catapults. They are back to the catapults again. Let's just give you an idea of what that might have looked like whilst I'm telling you about it. Now the Roman gate apparently survived until the medieval period called Ordigate or Orgate, and it was rebuilt in 1108 to 47 and again in 1215. And its continued importance was assured by the building of the great priory of Holy Trinity just inside the gate. Now the medieval gate had a single entrance flanked by two large semicircular towers. 
And it was during this period that Allgate had its most famous resident, the poet Geoffrey Chaucer, who lived in rooms over the gate from 1374, whilst a customs official in the Port of London. Allgate was completely rebuilt in 1607 to 9, but was finally pulled down in 1761 to improve traffic access. So, let's just have a look around here. So all of this area here would have been Aldgate with the main Roman road going that away and into London down that away. And now what have we got? We've got green space. We're filming this in early February. So we've got some blossom on the tree, which is lovely. And then you've got the church there as well and that church will have been redeveloped quite a few times okay there you go that's number five next let's go for number six now, i love this i don't know how many we're going to find but well done to the city of london because they've actually shown here there you go there's a cross section of the roman wall at duke's place which we're heading in a second hopefully we can see some of that revealed in the 1977 to 1978 excavations again that's what it would have looked like unfortunately with a bit of graffiti and then you've got the roman wall overlaid into the current road circuit so this is what we're going to walk up now at duke's place so what we're going to walk up is exactly where the wall would have been. Let's just see if there's anything different on the other side. Oh yeah. And on the other side you've got archaeology. And then some of the things that have been found around here. Love it. So that would have been the oil gate just on the outside of the wall. But the wall would have continued exactly where we're walking now. So can you see these lines in front of us? These sort of two can only be described as oh <laughs> i'm loving this now normally when i'm in london i say whatever you do look up for this one you don't you look down there we go and that says just make sure we can take that in london wall the Roman city wall was built 190 to 225 AD, a major public building work showing the civic pride and marking the high status of Londinium, which was the largest walled urban settlement in Roman Britain, Britannia. Lovely. Right, so yeah, we're actually on the wall. Oh, now let's go down. So it looks like there's a number of these plaques down here. Right, here we go. This is great, it's just literally on the floor. And this says the wall was built of squared ragstone blocks from quarries near Maidstone, brought to the city on river barges. Red clay tiles were used for the bonding courses to strengthen the wall, and sandstone plinth on the outer face marks the ground level. So as we go down, you've actually got a history. So it's well worth stopping and having a look at all this. This one, the original wall, there you go, 2.7 metres wide, 3 kilometres long, and approximately 4.4 metres high. They enclosed an area of 330 acres. Square towers built at intervals on the inner part, which gave it access to a walkway and the parapet. Ah, look. Yeah, I was right. Look, so you see that there? You then got that being put down. They are site of the London Wall. Right. Got more here. So, at the same time, an external bank was built and a ditch was cut 3.5 metres from the whole wall. And the ditch was a V-shaped and quite deep and it was known as an ankle breaker. And the wall and the ditch were important defences for Londinium in the late Roman period. We had read about this, they put ditches in. So it made it extremely difficult. There we go. And another one. So here, Aldgate and London Wall were repaired and rebuilt using reused ragstone in the medieval period. 
and the ditch was recut as London expanded. The ditch became filled in and was built over Aldgate and the wall were demolished in the 17th century. So it's just what we read earlier. So it's just replacing the history. But here you can see where the wall went, which is incredible. There you go, and the remains of the Roman and medieval wall and Bastinian ditches survive here below Aldgate Square, streets and approximate buildings and basements. And the base of the wall is approximately three metres below pavement level. So that thing's been built over it and it's still here which is quite incredible. Now, actually, I'm just going to go and have a quick look at something because I've just noticed in the square area here where the tower would have been, so Aldgate itself, the gate allowing in, I wonder if this actually signifies anything here because they've been good at marking stuff out. No, I think it does, actually. No, it's just a nice square area so basically you've got the foundations you've got everything still down below below ground below ground level here in the city of london right one day someone will dig it up <coughs> i dare say okay oh they are fantastic and here we've got the site of the bastion which is marked there. Okay. Right, let's get back to the London Wall bit. So the Bastions had solid bases. Got more here. Bases reusing stone and sculpture from early Roman buildings and funerary monuments. And the Bastion here is believed to have been constructed around 350 AD and based on the evidence of an excavated coin that dated to 340, 341 AD. Wow. We've well, got the site, the site of the Bastion over here as well. Right. And one of the things I spoke about earlier, and I thought it was that church, it's not. So this was the site of the Priory of the Holy Trinity that we talked about. And then you've got some information. And the reason I'm not showing you quite round, but you can hear behind, it's actually now a school. So this was the site of the Holy Trinity, Holy Trinity Priory. And you've also got this into a nice square, which is Mitre Square. There we go. Right, let's continue our walk around. Oh, you've got to love London and you've got to love London for its history. Right. Out of St. James's Passage, back into Duke's Place. Right. So let's keep walking down here. And you can see right in front of you, you've got the skyscrapers of London all here. We're still on the walk of the London Wall. So we're now out of Duke's place and we're walking down Bevis Marks. And here's our next plaque. Now, number six has disappeared. Once upon a time, there used to be a subway around Aldgate. We heard number six. So here's number seven, which is our next one. And that. So the engraving shows the area around Bevis Marks as it appeared in the reign of Elizabeth I. The city will all gate the four towers in the city ditch can be clearly seen. So there you go, I've got out there. Although the wall has disappeared in this area, many of the streets still survive today. Outside the wall were wooden tender frames used for stretching newly woven cloth. The original phrase to be on the tender hooks. Oh wow, there you go. And a gun foundry can be seen near some Boltaft's church at the end of Houndsditch. Uh, beyond the open fields, spittle fields stretching towards the villages of Shoreditch and Whitechapel. Some historian John Stowe wrote in 1580 and he recorded the many unsuccessful attempts to prevent the city ditch becoming a dumping ground for rubbish, including for dead dogs, which gave Houndsditch its name. See? <sighs> Who says you don't learn stuff on this channel? Um, in the 17th century, the ditch was finally filled in and the area used for gardens. There we are. Right, okay, that's number seven. And now we're going to head towards number eight. And a long walk down Bevis Marks and towards Wilmwood Street. Okay, so we're right in the middle of another busy traffic junction. So Oldgate was right down there, right down the far end, which you can see. We're now in Bishop's Gate. So this, as you can, as the name suggests, is another gate that get people into the centre of London. So the wall 
literally came up here, up this road from Aldgate, and then it went over that way, which is London Wall, or down Wormwood Street towards London Wall, which is where we're heading. So you've got Liverpool Street down there. This road is called a Bishop's Gate itself, so the whole thing, um, the whole road has taken the name from. You've got Heron Tower there, that's Horizon at 22. Up there, you've got the Duck and Waffle, all different places that we've been to. But incredible to think that actually here would have been a gateway into London, which the Romans would have let you in. And this would have been one of the main roads going in and out. Now, now it's known as the A10, which is a busy road that sort of goes out towards North London, or North London at the time, and takes you into the city that way. Okay, so we're in the heart of the city of London, just down the road from Liverpool Street. This road is called London Wall, and here we go, we've got the skyscrapers, that's the one with Horizon 22, and you can also see the top of the gherkin there. But then, as you look down London Wall, it carries on down through that way. And I know there's a big chunk of it down that way as well. So I'm looking forward to getting to that in a second. So this is all at London Wall and would have been a part of the original route of the wall that would have gone around the city of London. So as we progress down London Wall, we're at another busy junction. This junction is Moorgate, and as the name suggests, yes, another gate was here. So this is Moorgate, so you've got traffic which takes you into the city of London, goes down that way, that takes you to Bank, so that would have taken you right into the heart of the city of London in Roman times, and this would have taken you, this road would have taken you up to the north. So once again, this would have been another important Roman road. Now this whole area here is Moorgate, and this was where the gate would have been established, so you'd have had more towers down here. So this is Moorgate. So what have we done so far? We've done Aldgate, we've done Bishop's Gate, and now we've done Moorgate. And we're going to continue walking down that way, because down there, this is London Wall, and we've got even more to see down here. And I know there's some bits of the wall which are still remaining down by the old uh, Museum of London, which we have covered in a previous video. So we're going to head down that way now. Now, a real shame it is that a lot of the original postings, so there's a 21 different, moral, uh, different signposts that we're looking for, have disappeared, which is a real shame. So uh, when we find them, we will bring them to you. So I haven't forgotten to bring them to you. It's just a lot of them are no longer in existence. So here at London Wall, we've got St Alfridge Garden. Now, as you can see, there's a big expanse of wall here. Uh, you've got a good map which actually tells you about it. And you've also got an abandoned chapel with the remains remaining from medieval times from around the 1300s. So this is a great place to come as well. And if you're approaching it from the Barbican, there's a nice walkway that you can come down and you get a great view over all of the gardens, as well, of course, as all of the skyscrapers and other buildings that have been built up around it. But it's still incredible to see this bit of the Roman city wall sitting here. So here at London Wall, right by the Museum of London, we've got another great section of wall. Now, what's interesting is I've now come to almost feel like a small expert here, but because we've come down near the foundations, you can get up close and you can actually touch the wall. But look, you've got the terracotta in the wall there, which was used to strengthen it all those many, many years ago. Incredible. So again, so close to it. And originally down here, there was a church, but the church dates back to about the 1200s. And as you can see, we've got offices and everything built up around it. So there you go, you've got the Remains of Roman wall there. And then as you go down, you've got all of the skyscrapers. By the way, that noise in the background, uh, they're tidying up. Get rid of all the winter branches and the blown stuff. Right. So that was St. Alfred's Garden. Now we're coming to another section of London, which is called a Barbican. Which we must come do a video on. It's not Fundabar, but anyway, right. This, ha. Ah, would have been the site of Cripplegate. Now well, we found our next plaque, one that's surviving. Yeah. 
Right, so this is what Cripplegate would have looked like. Let me tell you all about it. So, Cripplegate was originally the northern entrance to the Roman fort, built AD 120. The Roman gate probably remained in use till at least the late Saxon period, and it is mentioned in the 10th and 11th century documents. The gate was rebuilt in the 1490s, although its history, Cripplegate had very variety of uses. It was leased as accommodation, and also, like the more famous Newgate, which was used as a prison, and we're heading towards that way now, where that's the direction we're going. After restoration of Charles II in 1660, all of the city gates were unhinged and the portcullises were just open, making them useless for defences. The gates and um, the gates covered another century, so many emphasis before being demolished. Sorry, it's hard to read because someone's taken a chunk out. Anyway, Cripplegate gave access to a substantial medieval suburb and to the village of Islington. An extra defensive works outside the gate gave rise to the name Barbican which was subsequently taken as the name for the post-World War II rebuilding of the area. There you go. That's where we are there. And that's what the medieval Cripplegate would have looked like. Right. Let's go through and we're going to take a walk, hopefully through the Barbican. But I know sometimes it can be closed. So let's go. Okay, so we're now in the Barbican centre area. And what have we got here? There we go, we've got number 14. And this is the city walls and towers. Right, so let's have a look at that first. So you've got a chunk of the wall up there. I love this. You just walk around the corner and there's a big bit of wall. And look at that further down, which is what we're gonna to head to next, going down that way. Fantastic. Right, so let's tell you a little bit about this. So this section of the wall originally formed the northern side of the Roman fort, built once again AD 120. The defences were completely rebuilt in the early medieval period, and most of the surviving stonework dates to this time. Now, the modern lake in front of it indicates the approximate position of the medieval ditch, which contained the great store of very good fish of diverse sorts. So there you go, so it was a ditch, I filled it up, and it's got fish of all different types of niceties that they used to have in it. So in the 13th century, a series of towers were added to the outside of the wall, and the remains of two such towers survive here. The battlements in this section were rebuilt in brick, probably in the late 15th century, as at St Alfridge. Now, from the early medieval period, they grew up to be a suburb outside the wall around it called St Giles, which was built in 1090. In fact, interestingly enough, the church is just behind. I'll give you a quick look at that in just one second. After the ditch was filled during the 17th century, the city wall became the southern boundary of the churchyard, and this ensured the survival of the wall until 1803, when, by reason of frequent nuisances committed by some of the loudest classes of people who had suffered to inhabit adjoining premises, it was demolished. Right. There we go, so there's the wall. So that would have been part of the ditch, which we talked about earlier. Whoops. And then you've got this church. Now let's go around here and bring you around to that. This is St. Giles's church. And then they've got a church hall down below which seems to be today being used for a kindergarten, which is good to get good usage out of it. Now, what makes this quite amusing is it feels completely out of character, this church, with the rest of the Barbican estate, which is much more modern. So built after World War II, those big, tall buildings. Yet you've got this. Now, a great thing about having this area in the Barbican is that because there's so many different bits to the Barbican and you can climb up to different heights, it gives you a great view down when you find a vantage point like this. So this turret, we're gonna have a good lack at in just a couple of seconds when we look at the next plaque. And of course, there's the bit of the Roman wall there and also the water in front of it. Okay, so we're at plaque number 15, and this is St. Giles's Cripplegate Tower. Now, this medieval tower marks the northwest corner of the Roman and medieval defences. Now, most of the Roman wall was completely rebuilt during the early medieval period, but between 1211 and 1213, a new defensive ditch was dug around the outside of the wall. Soon after, a series of towers was added along its western side. 
Now this tower survived to two thirds of its original height and it would have had wooden floors. Uh, in peacetime, the towers were rented for a variety of uses, and some of them were occupied by hermits. This tower may have been used for the purpose since the 13th century, and the hermitage of St. James in the Wall built was built nearby. In 1872, when the area was redeveloped, the crypt of the hermitage chapel was removed to Mark Lane, where it still survives today. There you go, and that's what it would have looked like. So, actually, it's sort of behind this wall. But before we get there... Ah... This would have been one of the defences. And we saw this from the other side, but you can't get to it because it's for residents only. Which is why they put a nice bench in there. Fantastic. So it would have been one of the defences. And earlier we were over the other side there with the church and also a piece of wall that's down there as well. So this would have been the chapel that we were talking about. Yeah, still quite a bit of it, still surviving. I love the way, the way nature just takes over. Like, right, not being used, let's grow over it. And the uh, white building you can see was the old Museum of London, which is currently going through extensive renovations. So they're sorting that out. Really hope you're enjoying the video, and if so, you do need to subscribe. The reason for that is part two will be coming up very shortly, where we'll be bringing you even more Rome in London, including an amphitheatre we found underneath the Guildhall. Right, let's go have a look at this bit. Because it looks like, once again, the signs have gone missing. You can see where it's been built modern. Let's go around into the turret a bit. There we go. Excellent, right. So over in this bit, which is now a car park, we find another sign. This is number 18. So, it's interesting. So this would have been the west gate of Roman Fort. So prior to the construction of the western section of the road, the London Wall in 1959, excavations revealed the west gate of a Roman Fort built in 120. It had twin entrances, ways, twin entrance ways flanked on either side by square towers. And now only the northern tower can be seen. Ah, which is what that was over there. which is that tower over there. So we're now crossing over London Wall. That's where the tower was we've just seen. And then as we go down at Noble Street, we have our next evidence of more remains, which are just here. More wall. So that would have come straight down here. So whilst these would have been built over in medieval times. So this would have been the wall boundary so we're inside it here this area would have been a fort because it represents a corner and then the wall 
pings off in a slightly different direction, which hopefully we can follow. But this area would have been a fault on the corner. So let's have a look back. There you go. So that's the wall all coming down here. And then it would head it off in that direction. See if I can see anything down because it's quite deep down there. No, you can't. Now here, we're at plaque number 21. So if you're listening carefully at the beginning, you'll know this is the final plaque, but it's not the end of our journey because although the rest of it isn't marked out, well, it's quite strange, we are going to go and do some of the other bits and pieces. Anyway, this was Aldersgate. Now, Aldersgate, after increasing threat from the raids by the Saxons from across the North Sea in the 4th century, led to the strengthening of Roman defences. And it's probable that the west gate of the Roman fort was blocked. And a new gate was built here at this time. Uh, the gate was of late Roman military design with a twin roadway flanking by a semicircular projected towers. And these were built of solid masonry and provided an elevated platform for catapults. Aldous Gate continued to provide an important gate to the medieval period as it gave access to the wall and the ditch to St Bartholomew's Priory and London Charterhouse and the livestock market and fair on Smithfield, which funny enough, Smithfield is there. We're going to do that one day. Um, in 1660, in October, Samuel Pepys wrote, I saw some of the limbs of our new tristers set upon Aldersgate, a bloody week this and last has been, and they're being ten hanged, drawn, and quartered. And after being damaged in the Great Fire of London in 1666, the gate was rebuilt, and the opposing structure finally demolished in 1761 to improve traffic access. Now that's what it looked like, the gateway in its final form, built in 1672 and gone in 1760. So this would have been the site of Orders Gate. So once again, another busy road. This is Orders Gate Street, funnily enough. This area would have been Orders Gate, and there's also a blue plaque here, which signifies that it was the site of Orders Gate, demolished in 1761. So whilst that's the end of the official plaques, we're going to continue walking what would have been the route of the wall. And this takes us through Postman's Park, which we have covered on a previous video, and then towards St Bartholomew's, to Newgate. Yes, it's another gate. So we'll pause at there before sort of leading down to the Thames. So let's take you around. Once we get through to the other side of the park, we're almost at the back of Christchurch Greyfriars. Oh, and it's a windy old day. So whilst the plaques have well and truly finished, we continued the walk. So we're going to continue the walk of where it was. So this is where Newgate was. So yes, another entrance in. Now, interesting, the Newgate, and this is the area of Newgate here, Newgate was once again another entrance into the city wall with roads going up through that way. Now the wall came down through here, the roads would have gone up through here, but Newgate was famous for its prison. And this is where they keep kept people in prison. So the wall came down through that way, it came through what is now St Bartholomew's Church, um, St Bartholomew's Hospital, through there, then down here, the tower would have been here with the prison and the jail in it, and then it would have gone down there. Now, what's really funny is how things don't change over time, because what have we got over there? We've got new gates, and what's above new gate? If you recognize that, you'll know. That's the old bailey, that the other law courts. And of course, the jails are still used down there now to bring people in when they're awaiting trial. So this, from being Roman times, shape the fact that we got the old bailey still sitting there now you've got the viaduct tub at tavern and it was under here that you had old jail cells which is apparently still visible today although i haven't quite worked out how you get in there and go and see them anyway that, that's for another video at another time so the roman wall 
Okay. Would have gone down through this way. So this would have been Newgate. And then you go down past the Old Bailey. They're funny, eh? And this takes you straight down towards the Thames. And once you get to the Thames, that was the end of the London Wall. Now, my understanding is there are still parts of the London Wall inside the Old Bailey and underneath the Central Criminal Court down in the jails that have been preserved. Obviously, you can't get in there unless you've been a very naughty person and you get to see them exclusively, but I don't think it's worth it for that. Um, but anyway, that's, that's where you go. So yeah, the wall would have been underneath where the courts are now. So this is the Old Bailey, the Central Criminal Court, and there it's further down. So here we're following the wall. We're on Ludgate Hill, which is Fleet Street up one side, and then up the other right, you can see there, St Paul's Cathedral. And then, there you go, St Paul's coming into view there. And then we continue down here, leading to Ludgate Broadway. So, the wall would have been on our left-hand side as we go down Ludgate Broadway. And this leads us down towards the Thames. But it's all little twisty tiny roads. And of course, no evidence, no evidence today of any brickwork, I dare say it layers down there we go and there's where Blackfriars gets its name from so we'll head straight down here this is Blackfriars Lane and this should take us down towards the Thames But interestingly, all of this at one point would have been Blackfriars. And we're coming up by the side of the railway. So we're right by Blackfriars station. As we come down here, there we go. There's a hall. Very nice shield, isn't it? And then the wall continued down here. And to that wall there, which takes you to the other side, to the Thames. So the final bit of wall would have come down through this way out through the city, through Blackfriars, and then over to the River Thames, which is right where we are now. So that's where, as close as we can get it, the London Wall would have been. The wall constructed in 120 to keep the Romans safe and fortified with a big ditch around it as well. So I hope you really enjoyed our walk around the city of London, but doing it slightly different as the Romans would have done it if they were checking their wall to make sure it was all fortified to keep them nice and safe. And also, isn't it incredible the bits of wall that are available? I'll put a link to one of our videos of the Tower of London, which is where we started this walk. So I'll see you in there.